What's up, homie? It's great to see you. You know, I just purchased the Shure MV7 microphone. I've had it for two days and I have been absolutely jonesing to open up the box and take a peek, but I've waited because I want to make sure a camera is rolling so that you can see the contents of the microphone. We're going to open it up, take a look at the manuals, get the microphone up and running, see how the software, it comes with software to see how it changes the characteristics of the sound of the mic. And then finally, we're going to compare it to the sound of this Black Yeti. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. The reason why this video exists is because I made this video which discusses the gear that I use to make YouTube videos and I also discussed that I wanted to buy a Shure SMB7 microphone, you know, the one that Joe Rogan uses. And after I made it and posted the video, I started getting comments and people were saying, dude, you don't want to buy that mic because you got to buy a $100 cloud lifter amplifier, you need to buy a an audio interface which costs anywhere between $100 to $300, then you got to buy the mic which is $400, bucks, so that's bringing you up around $800 and I was like, ugh. You know, 800 bucks for a mic is really not where I'm at. So people kept telling me that I should get the MV7. It's got a USB out. It's got an XLR jack out. It also allows you to plug your headphones directly into the microphone so you can hear the audio. And it only costs 250 bucks. So I was a clincher. I researched it a little bit more and purchased this thing two days ago. So after doing that, I had a call with George Whittem. He works in California. He's a voiceover technician. And he told me that based on what I'm doing on YouTube, that this microphone may not be the best choice. And so I said, dude, can we have a call about it and we'll make a live stream and we'll discuss the best microphones for YouTubers. And he said, yes. So that video is coming soon. You can subscribe and click the bell to be notified when that one comes out. I think you're gonna be very surprised what he recommends as a microphone based on my type of usage, which means that I don't have this close to my face. So that's gonna be really interesting. Okay, let's get into it. Let's open this box up right now, let's go. Okay, let's do this. Here's the box, let's cut it open. Okay. Let's open this up, very nice. It says, welcome to better sound. That's what I'm talking about. Pull this thing out of here. It's got a little handle here. It's kind of cool. All right. Okay, there's a door right here. And we are presented with what looks like to be the quick start guide. Here it is here. Looks pretty nice. Pretty simplistic, very nice. And here's some information about the software that changes the characteristics of the mic. We will dig into that soon. Here is a piece of cardboard. It says where to go to download the, the software. So that's kind of nice. It's hard to miss when it's a thick piece of cardboard. So when you touch it, you see it, and that's where you go. All right, here's the microphone. Ooh, yeah. Oh, this thing's pretty beefy, man. Oh, it's heavy. It's really heavy. Definitely, definitely, definitely heavy. Yep, it's a nice piece of equipment. There's the jacks on the back, your XLR, your headphone jack, and your USB. Is that mini USB? Yeah, very nice, very nice. Look at that. Yep, it's quality. It sure feels like it is. Okay, let's put that right there. This looks like it could be... don't know. Oh, these are wires. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be... Oh, that's a Ziploc bag, okay. This looks like it's probably... This is mini USB to... What's that? Micro USB? What are those cords called? I forget. Anyway, it's two... It's micro to micro USB, I'll call it. And then the other one is in a Ziploc bag, and it is mini USB to regular USB. Okay, so we get two of those, and that's a lot of wire, too. These look to be about close to 10 feet in length. They're pretty pretty lengthy. Uh, what else do we have in here? Okay, looks like... What's this? Whoop. I don't even know what this is. I can barely read it. I guess this is the stuff that you don't read stuff. The Shure manual? No, this is... What is this? Some kind of a warranty? Yes, limited warranty with 15 different languages. Okay. Limited warranty, and this is what? 
this document. Um, that looks like it's in Arabic. This one, some other language. I guess this is some kind of addition to the limited warranty. And here's the yellow paper that no one reads because it says don't spill it in water. Don't store the microphone in a thousand degrees temperature. Nobody reads that. So there you have it. That's what's inside the box. Here's what it looks like without the foam on it. Looks pretty cool. It's definitely beefy. It definitely feels like a serious piece of equipment. There's the volume adjuster that everybody talks about. And the, is that the mute button? Yeah, there's the mute. I know there's a mute lock so that you don't touch that by mistake and turn your mic off. Let's get into plugging this in and finding out what it sounds like. All right. Okay, I gave myself a couple days. I made a couple videos with this microphone. Here's the general summary. Here's my pure opinion, okay? I've been working with it now, and this is the, here's the bottom line. Number one, the sound that this mic is capable of recording is definitely better, in my opinion, than this Black Yeti that I used to have. And I will keep, by the way, as a backup mic. It definitely has a better range, in my opinion. So in regards of recording quality, it's a win. Some of the things that kind of bum me out, though, about the microphone, number one thing that's just absolutely like, are you serious, sure? is the foam, is the wind guard on this thing. You see this foam guard here? If you take it off and you feel how thick this tip is, it's paper thin. And unfortunately, just pardon the noise there, unfortunately the plosives are really bad if you're too close to the mic. It, it doesn't correct. The wind guard stops none of that. So you're going to have to go out and purchase yourself an SMB7 guard, wind guard, that has a longer, thicker mic at the end, or a longer, thicker foam at the end of the microphone. And that's kind of, I mean, you're thinking like, really? After all the design and tech, you know, working on the technology, they didn't cross the finish line because they didn't make a good wind guard. I mean, it's crazy. Now, I'll tell you, if you want to get up and running and you want to solve the issue, I'll show you something, a little secret here. Nobody talks about this. If you take the mic and just pull the microphone, the foam out so that the metal base is exposed, but yet the, the actual mic itself is still covered, it, it fixes the issue. Problem solved. Doesn't look pretty, but it gets the job done if you want to get up and running right away. So there's a solution right there. Okay, number three. That is the mount to the boom. It's, there's no shock at all. It's a direct mount to the boom. Okay, I've got this super cheap Chinese screen door boom here. And every touch that I do, every t any kind of bump is like amplified. And I have yet to find any really decent uh, shock mount for this microphone. And so that kind of bums me out. Now, I guess I'm going to have to go out and buy a decent boom. And I'm researching it, and I don't want to do it. And I have to do it now because this thing is so sensitive. So, wow. The mount is not super great. It's just metal to metal, and there's no kind of shock resistance. Okay. The mute button that everybody talks about, which is located right here. Uh, let's see. Can you see that? Right here. People hitting it by mistake. That's not a big deal. All these settings on the front of the microphone, the volume, the, all that stuff, it's a set it and forget it kind of scenario. So it really, in my opinion, doesn't really have much of an impact on me. You set it once and then you don't have to touch it anymore. People are talking about the USB connector to the back of the mic and how it's exposed. I agree with that opinion. It could get bumped or knocked and then bend the port. Uh, so you have to be super duper careful about that. So that's kind of a design flaw. They should have put some more metal behind there to protect the, mat the port so that the plug doesn't get broken. Uh, let's talk about the software. At first glance, you're like, oh, this is really cool. But after a while, it's 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 kind of like, it's, I don't know, like it's almost like they designed the software for dummies. It's like overly simplistic. You know, when you click the manual button, it's really not manual at all. It's just sort of like click the button to get a better EQ, flat, click the button. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's like a engine repair light on your car. It doesn't tell you anything, it just does it. So I wish that there was more granular control that they would have provided in the manual selection. I love the fact that you can create presets. I just wish there was more interface in the software. 
I can tell you that when you go to auto level and you may or may not have concern about the proximity of the mic to your mouth, I, I love to not show the mic. I think it's kind of weird to show a mic in your face when you're talking. I don't believe that it provides any legitimacy to you in any way. I like the technology to be invisible so that you're focusing on the lesson. And I was concerned about how people were talking about proximity. This thing is about six inches from my face. It does absolutely beautifully, in my opinion. If I click the far button, it amplifies the mic. And so any outside sound, like my dehumidifier that turns on from time to time, gets super loud. So it's really not necessary to, to click that button to increase the sensitivity if your mouth is farther away. In my opinion, if your mouth is within eight to six inches, maybe tw two fist distances, right? Um, you should be fine and you can keep the mic out of view and it's not a problem. So I wouldn't recommend clicking the far button in the interface. Okay, we're gonna change the characteristics of the microphone with the Shure Plus mode of software. First things first, I'm going to click the far button here so that you can hear the difference in the sound. Now I'm moving about a foot away from the microphone. Now I'm about two feet away from the microphone. And I believe that you'll be able to hear that dehumidifier. It's called a white wing. It's a big one in the background when I click the far button. Okay, now we will click the tone buttons. We have the dark tone, which is to bring out more bass or warmth in the sound. Then we'll go back to the bright which brings out more high end in my voice, and then we have the natural selection. Now you may notice there's a little note here. It says, what, we're having trouble loading your microphone settings. You may continue to use your microphone. And then it goes away, and this comes and goes with the software, and I find it to be very irritating, uh, and it makes you wonder if it's even working. And then you start to question whether you should even use the software because the message comes and goes. So again, this software is a pain in the neck, really, when you think about it, and I almost, feel like not even using it all and just modifying the qualities of the microphone in post. Live meters has to deal with the uh, the interface here on the, on the microphone, and that is also true for night mode, so we're not going to play with that. Let's go into the manual, and there's that message again. You just simply don't know whether or not the thing is actually taking control of the mic or not at that point. I'll assume it is right now. You can mute the you can modify the gain here. So this is the volume of the microphone. Monitor mix has to do with playback, and so it's not really necessary. The EQ is what I like to play with. We've got flat, which is what is selected currently. Then we have something called high pass, I think it is. Yes, high pass. High pass. Then we have present boost, and then we have high pass and present boost, which is pretty cool. So I'll go back to flat. And here is the limiter, turn the limiter on. And there's also a light compressor, medium compressor, and a heavy compressor. Okay, you can create a preset. You have to be in the auto level. Here we are in auto level, and then you click the preset pull down and hit save, and then type in your preset name and hit save, and you're good to go. Now, if you're looking to create that SMB7 sound with this microphone, I recommend that you scroll down inside of the auto level tab, scroll down and click the dark tone, and then you get that warm, delicious sound that that sort of SMB7 can generate. You know, that Joe Rogan sound. Now we will conduct a sound comparison between the MV7 and the Black Yeti. This is the MV7, JBD, Camo Man 73, Paranormal and more, YouTube Spirits, Ghosts, History, Nature and Adventure. JBD, Camo Man 73, Paranormal and more, YouTube Spirits, Ghosts, History, Nature and Adventure. JBD, Camo Man 73, Paranormal and more, YouTube Spirits, Ghosts, History, Nature and Adventure. So what's your take on this microphone? Do you think it's better than the Yeti? Is it worth the money? Do you think my opinions are correct? I would love to hear your opinion. Let us know in comments. Stay strong and keep it.